So what do you do when you have to solve a logarithmic equation and the bases are not the same? Well, in this video, I wanna go over an example for you to show you how to approach a situation like that. Okay, so you can obviously hopefully see on this side, I have log base B or three, and over here, I have log base nine. Now, one thing that usually would kind of scream out the students, whenever you have a log equal to a log, students want to apply the one-to-one -one property, and this would be pretty easy to be able to solve on from there. However, then you'd get a no solution because the X's would divide out. But either way, you can't apply the one-to-one -one property for logarithms because our bases are not the same. When you're applying the log to one-to-one -one property, you have to have the bases to be exactly the same. So we can't go ahead and do that. What we do wanna do is get these bases to be the same. Right now, they're not the same. So one thing I can apply is what we call the change of base formula. And if you remember the change of base formula, if I have a log base B of A, I can rewrite that as the log of A, which is my argument, over the log of B, which is going to be my base. Now, in this example, I'm using base 10, but you can also use the natural base or you can use any base that you want to. That's really, really important because if I get to pick the base that I want my change of base formula to follow, I wanna pick log base three. Now, a couple things that are helpful here. One is now I have all my logarithms in log base three. And number two is I can actually evaluate this, right? The log base three of nine is basically saying three raised to what number is gonna equal uh, nine? Well, hopefully we know that that number is going to be a two. Now again, I still can't use the one-to-one -one property here because I have this logarithm being divided by two. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is get the two off the denominator by multiplying by two on both sides. Now those are going to divide out. But then again, I still can't use the one-to-one -one property because now this logarithm is being multiplied by two. However, I can use my properties of logarithms to say whatever I'm multiplying a logarithm by, I can rewrite that as the power of the argument. That is going to be our product rule of logarithms. If I have a times log b to the x, I can rewrite that as a log base b of x to the a. Now, ladies and gentlemen, finally, I have a logarithm equal to a logarithm. We have the same bases. They're taking different arguments. So therefore, I can simply set one argument equal to the other. Now, you can see that all I simply need to do is go ahead and simplify this. That's gonna give a quadratic because x plus one is going to give me an x squared. So then I'm gonna get everything over to the same side and either look to apply factoring or the quadratic formula. Now, I know that there's no two numbers that multiply to give me a negative three that are add to give me a negative one. So unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we need to go to good old quadratic formula. All right, so remember the quadratic formula, the solutions to this, x is gonna equal opposite of b, which in this case would be a positive one, plus or minus the square root of my b squared minus four times a, which in this case is one, times c, which is a negative three, and that's all over a two times a. So I can now just go ahead and simplify here. Negative one squared is going to be a positive one. Negative four times negative three is going to be a positive 12. One plus 12 is going to be a 13. And that's gonna be all divided by two. You can divide that two into both of those, but either way, our main goal here is to be able to identify now is are we actually going to get a extraneous solution, right? We know that our argument inside of our logarithm cannot be negative. So these values has to be either larger than a positive one, and we know that one plus the square root of 13, that's not gonna to be too bad, like that will work. But one thing I do wanna check is the one minus the square root of 13. One minus square root of 13 divided by two. And actually, if we approximate this, it's going to be negative 1.3, so therefore, that's gonna make the argument inside that logarithm extraneous, so this is an extraneous solution, so therefore our only solution is going to be the positive value of one plus the square root of 13 divided by two. 